and welcome to our first Sunday worship service in the month of March. This is our third Sunday in Lent, if you can believe that already. We're moving right along. And as we come together this morning, you'll notice that uh, Amanda has muted us all so that we can begin our service today. Um, before we get started, we do always like to take a time for welcome and announcements. And so I have a few like I normally do, but are there any words of welcome or announcements for us to share with one another this morning? Second call, are there any words of welcome or announcements? Because I can certainly begin mine if there aren't any. And if you um, are trying to make one and you're on mute, just remind yourself to unmute yourself before you talk. So good morning, everybody. I would like to extend an extravagant welcome to all of you. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad we're at church together. We have some... COVID numbers to share. So the little low line we used to look at before, what we've done since we don't have to show such a high range at the beginning, we've shortened our vote, our focus to the, um, to the line so we can see exactly now with when we're one or two cases over before we had to show you know, many tens of cases over. So we um, are seeing a increase, slowly growing increase. And that is kind of the bump they said that would come after the holidays. So let's hope that this is just a short lived trend because overall the numbers have trended downwards we are taking the first steps to have in worship service and um, and we hope that that will happen. We have some uh, plans for training. I wanna remind you if you thought you would wanna go back, back to your position as usher or greeter or you've always thought there was something you could do like that and um, please, Raise your hand now so that you can be included in the training that we'll have um, so that we can handle whatever comes up under the new, under the new uh, in-person worship that will be starting soon. We even are having a goal of having in-person worship on Easter Sunday, what a wonderful way that would be to celebrate Easter and a new beginning for our church. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Deborah. Other words of welcome or announcements for us to share this morning? Well, I have a few then. One is a programming note. Uh, and, you know, lest we think ourselves perfect, um, the gospel reading is not Mark chapter 8, verse 31 through 38. If you were here last Sunday, that would sound very familiar to you. That was last Sunday's gospel. This Sunday's is actually John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. So when I read that, it will sound a lot more like John than it will Mark. Um, a couple other announcements. We are continuing to have our Lenten Wednesday night, what we're calling Zoop suppers, because they're Zoom suppers that we're joining together. Uh, it's six o'clock on every Wednesday. We send the information out to everyone. And it's a time that has been a really fun time for everyone to just join in, checking up and being together and gathering. You can eat while you're there. You can eat before. You can eat after. You can just have a cocktail while you're there or just drink water while you're there. You can do nothing but just join in and be there. Uh, like these is, are the wonderful options to partake in it. And really it's just a fun time for us to come together and gather. And then we always end with a moment of reflection or prayer. And that, you know, again, is a blessing onto our evening for us to carry through the Lenten season. 
uh, technical and uh, schedule reminder for you. Next Sunday is daylight savings time. So next Saturday before you go to bed, make sure you spring your clock forward. If you thought you felt tired and couldn't get out of bed this morning like me, uh, then next Sunday might be even more difficult. So, uh, <laughs> but make sure that you have that. And of course, we'll remind via email and letter and all of that. So uh, that's all the announcements that I have for us this morning. And I will do one final call for words of a welcome or announcements today. Then as we go to a time of reflection, it reminds me to thank Maxine for being here on the piano today, Diana, who will be singing for us today, Amanda behind the computer running everything, Rose Serma behind the computer learning uh, so she can step in and run everything as well, and of course Prescott behind the camera. Um, thank you all for everything you do for us each and every Sunday. And let us now take this moment of reflection to center and prepare ourselves for worship. And now with hearts centered on God, let us indeed join in our call to worship. This call to worship is adapted from Psalm 19, printed in your bulletin, and words will be on your screen. Awake and hear the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God and the decrees of the Lord are sure. Let those who seek the law of the Lord gather near. The precepts of the Lord are true, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, opening the eyes. Let us live into how God calls us and seek God's will in our lives. We stand in awe of our God, whose ordinances are more desirable than gold, whose words are sweeter than honey. And let us not hold nothing back then and worship in full adoration of our God. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And let us join now in the prayer of invocation as we continue our worship together. Let us covenant once more in the commandments our God has given. We promise to have no other gods before you, the Lord our God. We promise to not make any idols for ourselves to bow down to or worship. We promise to not use the name of the Lord our God wrongly. We promise to always remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. We promise to honor our father and mother. We promise to not murder, to not commit adultery, to not steal or bear false witness against our neighbor. We promise to not want what our neighbor has, is, or does in any way. And we ask for your help, O oh God, for we need you ever present with us to shepherd us when we stray from your holy law. Be with us as we also promise to love you, God, with all our heart, mind, and soul, and to love our neighbor as you loved us. 
Amen. Our opening hymn is a relatively new one for us, I believe, but it's called Praise with Joy, the World's Creator. It's in the New Century Hymnal, number 273. Words will be on your screen or in your hymnal packet. This is Praise with Joy, the World's Creator. Let us continue worshiping now as we pray our prayer of confession with one another together. Eternal God, whose word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, we recognize and confess that we have failed to respond fully to your gracious presence in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, you offered us new life, fulfillment, and freedom. Yet we are captive to the sins of our humanity sins of false pride, sins of thinking we know better, sins of greed and corruption, and the sins that are made worse by our inaction. Reconcile us to you and to all people. God of mercy, forgive all our sins and strengthen us anew for life as you will it. Through Christ our Savior, amen. And hear now these words of assurance. Our world may think us foolish for believing we can forgive and be forgiven. Our world may think us foolish for trusting in God. But we are saved through the love of the cross and the grace of Christ. May we live in that foolishness eternally. Amen. With hearts at peace through confession and forgiveness and freedom that is given through the grace of the cross. Let us now share a moment of peace with one another. A moment, yes, we would normally share elbow to elbow or arm to arm if we were here in person, but a moment that we have so blessedly shared in our prayers during this time away. And so again, as we must, let us pray for one another, pray for ourselves, pray for our world, but most of all, pray for peace.
And let all God's people say, Amen. Our scripture readings today come from the book of Exodus and the book of 1 Corinthians. Our first reading then is Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day it is a Sabbath day. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. And therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female servant, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Our second reading today is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. So where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. It's now time for our children's message. So children, would you please unmute yourself and say hello? Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. I thought the sermons were in there somewhere, too. Can you unmute yourself? Go ahead, say. Hi. Hi. Oh, I hear something. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning and welcome. How are you all doing? Good. Good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. So you wrote down all of those commandments we just read, right? No. No. Not, well, you must have them memorized. Uh, some of them. Some of them? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to read through the list, and you tell me to stop when we get to a commandment, okay? okay. I'm going to read the Exodus reading again, and you tell me to stop when we get to a commandment, okay? Okay. You gotta, I'm, you know, sometimes I'm a little hard of hearing, 
So everyone other than Prescott, because he's right like three you know, feet away from me, but anyone other than Prescott, you've got to yell stop for me, okay? Okay. All right. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You stop. shall have no other gods before me. Stop. Oh, okay. All right. So that's one, right? No gods other than God, right? Right. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above. Stop. Stop. Okay, no false idols, right? Right. All right. All right. So you shall not bow down to them or worship them. That's still about the idols, right? Yeah. All right. How about, you shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Stop. Stop. Okay, we're doing good. What does that mean? Wrongful use of the Lord's name. That's a tough one, right? Let me yeah. tell you what that means. If you stub your toe, you don't blame it on God. If you get in a <laughs> car accident, you don't blame it on God. If uh, something happens in your life that is really altering and you want to blame it on God, you still don't blame that on God. You bring it to God and you pray with God, right? And when you're out in public and something happens, you don't take the Lord's name in vain. You don't use God's name as an exclamation like, aha, or alas, or woe is me, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. <laughs> oh, okay. A couple of these I'm having to repeat. What's the Sabbath day? Sunday. Sunday. Sunday? Yeah. The seventh, the seventh day. The seventh day. And if I kept reading, why is it important that we take Sunday? So that we can rest? Yes. So we can rest. After all, if I kept reading, what would it say? Do you remember that part? Work six days and rest. God created everything in, in six, six days, days and, and rested still was on able the to take a day off. You think we can take a day off? Yeah. If God is willing to take a day off. Can we take a day off? Yeah. Yes. All right. If we, God can do everything possible and immense in the world in six days, you think we can take a day off too with God? Mm -hmm. All yeah. Right. So what does that mean for your Sunday? Uh, should rest. Should rest. But what does rest mean? Go to church. Well, amen to that. You should go to church for, you know, all right. Yeah. But what else should you do on Sundays? Pray. Pray. Okay. You guys are thinking too hard. Spend what else should you God. do on Sundays? Spend time with God. Sure. Spend time with God. Nothing. Nothing. Right? <laughs> oh, uh -huh. Sundays, sometimes we do this. We pack our Sundays full of things, right? Oh, I got to do the cleaning. I got to do the shopping. I got to go run my errands. I'm going to spend time with all my friends. I'm going to do all these things. I couldn't do during the week because I was working. When all God wants us to do is nothing and to rest and spend time with God. All right. Honor your father and your mother. Stop. Stop. Yeah, you know, uh, this one's pretty self-explanatory. But really, you should honor all people and all fathers and all mothers, right? Right. You shall not murder. Stop. Stop. Pretty self-explanatory. You shall not commit adultery. We'll talk about that when you get older. You shall not steal. Stop. Stop. Pretty self-explanatory, right? You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Stop. Yeah, very good. So what does false witness against your neighbor mean? Not make fun of them. What was that? Not make fun of them. Not make, not make fun. fun of them? Yeah, that's a good one. Shouldn't make fun of your neighbor. And you shouldn't accuse them of something they didn't do, right? Mm -hmm. Just to right. get in trouble, just so you can take their stuff, you see? 
All right. And the last, you shall not want anything that your neighbor has. Stop. Okay. So why is that an important one? Why is that an important commandment? To not want what your neighbor has. Well, if your neighbor has the newest, bestest Xbox ever and all the video games that you could play, oh, man, wouldn't it be great to have that? Yes. Uh, sure. <laughs> right, right, it would. But you also <laughs> have a whole bunch of things that maybe your neighbor doesn't have. See? And so not coveting, which means greedily wanting, right, what your neighbor has, means that you honor what gifts God has given you. Mm -hmm. And it's really important, and this will be really important, children, when you get older, is like, say, your neighbor or your best friend or your brother or your sister is super successful in your eyes and that is something that instead of being happy for where you are at in your life, you covet their success. Or say someone wins the lottery, and instead of being happy for them that they won the lottery, you say, oh, I wish I could have won the lottery. Or if someone has a really nice car, and you still have a car, but it's not really nice, you instead of appreciating your car, only want what your neighbor has. You understand now? Yes. Yeah. All right. And um, I hope your neighbor with the really cool Xbox invites me over too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a lot. Learning these commandments is a lot. Knowing and working through them in our lives is a lot. But what is the good news about all of this? That God sent Jesus to help us. That we have Jesus to help us with this, right? We're not yeah. alone in this. We're, God isn't up in heaven with Moses and saying, Moses, you got the tablets? And Moses is like, yes, I got the tablets. They're right here. Okay, check them off on what you did, right? No. <laughs> it's a life journey in faith. It's a life journey in following the commandments. And when we slip up and we make a mistake, Jesus offers us forgiveness and grace and we are loved to do better again in our next moments. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So next time we do the Ten Commandments again, you all will be able to uh, tell us all of them, right? Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right. All right. Let's pray. Our God who does give us laws and commandments to follow to better our lives. We are so incredibly thankful for these children that as they grow and learn, they will come to know your commandments. We are so incredibly thankful, God, that we as children of God, no matter how old or young we are, spend a lifetime trying to know and follow your commandments. And we are even more so thankful, God, that you sent us your Son, who told us the great commandment that we are to love you, God, with all our heart, mind, and soul, and to love one another as you love us. It's in that love we pray all things. Amen. Thank you, children. Mm -hmm. Our second hymn for today is Be Still My Soul. It's from the New Century Hymnal 488. This is the version we're going to be singing today. Of course, words on your screen or in your hymnal packet. Be still my soul. Be still my soul, for God is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain leave to your god to order and provide in every change god faithful will remain be still my soul your best eternal friend through thorny 
still my soul, for God will undertake to guide in future days as in the past. Your hope, your confidence, let nothing shake. shall be clear at last. Be still, my soul, the waves and winds still know how Jesus' power ruled them long ago. Be still, my soul, the hour will soon be shall be with God whom we adore. With this appointment, God, no grief nor fear, sorrow replaced with joy forevermore. Be still, my soul, change and tears are past. All safe and blessed we shall meet at last. Again, our gospel reading for today is from the book of John, chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. Hear these words from the book of John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, Well, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. And after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The word of our Lord. Will you please pray with me? Indeed, God, open our hearts to your word, our ears to what you long for us to hear, and our eyes to see in the way you long for us to see, that indeed your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Today we will be continuing our Witness in the Wilderness series but before we do that, I just want to add some connective tissue here between what seems like some odd scriptural choices. You know, we have the Old Testament scripture reading with the laws that were given down to Moses. And we have this New Testament scripture reading, this gospel reading that comes from Jesus going into the temple and overturning it and not wanting his father's house or God's house to be a place of making money or a marketplace. And what connects it all is Paul's letter to the Corinthians when he writes about the foolishness of Christ. That what seems foolish to our world is indeed what we take on. What seems foolish perhaps to the most wise among us is truth and clarity for us. And as we go through our Witness in the Wilderness series, and as we hear from what Lynn McCarthy has to tell us today, 
we will indeed be given a great example of how our faith and our trust and our hope and our love carries us through the foolishness of the world to the truth of Jesus Christ. So without ado, here's Lynn McCarthy. Thank you, Pastor Tony. When Pastor Tony asked me to participate in this, I said yes, right away. And then I began to stress over what I would say, how I would say it, and if I could really follow through and do it. And then I retreated to the, my two go-tos that throughout life I have gone to. And one is uh, the 121st Psalm, which is the Lord our protector. Where will my help come from? It will come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And the other is a song in the garden. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And I can still hear my mother singing that. And between those two things, when I'm struggling in the wilderness, sometimes literally on my knees, I go to those places and they resonate over and over in my mind and it gets me from point A to point Z. As I read the scriptures for today and they spoke of faith and love, it took me back to my childhood. I was raised on a farm in Illinois between the Illinois and Mississippi rivers in the hill country. And over the years, when I first moved to Little Falls, people used to say, what part of the South are you from? And I'd say, I'm not from the South. Um, but I think it was where I was raised that we had a little bit of an accent. And so being raised on the farm, um, my dad did not go to church with us very often. Daddy always said though, you have to observe the Sabbath. We farmed and on Sunday, you took care of your livestock, but you did no work. He maintained if you worked, you had breakdowns, you lost livestock, something happened that you, you lost more than you gained. And so the Sabbath was always kept for family time and extended family. And that, that was just the way it was in our house. Um, my dad had been raised first Christian. My mother had been raised in the United Methodist Church. And daddy always said, my children will not be baptized and they're, until they're old enough to make a commitment that they truly know what they're doing and that they want to do. So we had a little one room country church a quarter of a mile down the road from the farm. And that's where we attended church on Sundays. And sometimes dad went, sometimes he didn't. But that was, that was our church. It was the neighbors. It was a farm community. Everybody gathered on Sunday. <laughs> Moving forward in high school, we had no pastor. So then mother and I went into town to the Methodist church, town being 22 miles each way. And that is, that's where we worshiped. And I, that's the church I was married in eventually. After I graduated, I moved and went to Minneapolis to go to school. And being a poor student, I looked for a church within walking distance and Hennepin, you Hennepin Avenue United Methodist was within walking distance of where I lived. So therefore, that's where I began to attend. And after attending for a bit, I felt called to be baptized. I felt the time was right. I just really needed to make the commitment and follow through. And so there were several of us baptized on a Sunday evening by Dr. Chester Pennington. And he and his wife were two of the most gracious people. Uh, I was a little nobody off the farm in Illinois, but they treated me like they treated everyone else. And I always remember on that Sunday evening, the feeling of, of warmth, um, of blessing, and of truly being one of God's children. Like some of you, I never had an aha moment where something happened. I just always believed from the time I was old enough to know, I just always believed there was a supreme being in charge of my world. And so that was kind of how I lived my life. However, after being baptized, um, the wilderness still pops up sometimes and you retreat to that wilderness, whether you want to or not. And you go there seeking guidance and hoping on journeys you're on that you'll find the strength to get through them. 
As some of you know, I've had journeys sometimes in my life. Lynn, um, we just lost your volume for some reason. By praying through, and you aren't even aware of that. But they're always there for you, and, and you feel that. You get the strength to make the journey, even though it may lead where you didn't want to go. I think Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 4 through 9, um, blessings in Christ especially speak to that. And verse nine just speaks loudly to me. It says, God is to be trusted, the God who called us to have fellowship with Jesus Christ, our Lord. And trusting is much easier said than done for me. Um, I talk that I trust, I think I trust, and then sometimes it's not always easy to trust. However, I continue to attempt to learn and to pray and to know that I'll be given strength for the journey because there is a supreme being in charge of my world. Uh, I also believe that we live in a pay it forward world that as a result of that scripture I just shared, many people have paid it forward for me over the years. They've prayed me through situations. They've come and held my hand. They've just always been there. And um, so, Years ago, when my husband was in the hospital a lot, for months actually, after an accident, a dear friend who took me under her wing when I moved to Minneapolis was just always there, the angel in my world. And I said one day, Grandma Mel, how will I ever repay you? She said, oh, honey, you never repay me. You just pay it forward. And I've always tried to live my life that way, make that my motto pay it forward, do what you can for others, and hopefully they get a blessing out of it. As many of you know, I have known this church family since 1970. I have friends. I consider a lot of you family. Uh, I know there are some real prayer warriors in First United Church, and I am so, so grateful for all of that. And I just want to say thank you to each and every one. You all know who you are. And I'd like to leave you with a little thought. Find a seed in the bottom of your heart and bring forth a flower. That flower may make someone else's day easier. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lynn. And thank you for your witness as we continue our witness in the wilderness. Let us now join in prayer together, friends. God, we are indeed so thankful for this moment that Lynn has shared of her witness story with us. Faith, resilience, happiness, sad times, joy and sorrow, loss and gain, and love through it all. Thanks be to you, God. This is a story that so many of us can follow. A story that is very reminiscent of a journey where we are trying our best as we follow the laws and the commandments that we know. Where we are trying our very best, God, to remain foolish in faith with your cross, where we journey and purposefully take the time out in Lent to be in a wilderness area to reflect and spend time with you. And just like as Lynn has spoken of her travails, we have our ups and downs. We have our mountaintops and we have our valleys. And we are so thankful to you, God, that you are with us on the highs and the lows and the everything in between. We come here as a people, God, who you have called to be your hands and feet in our world, who you have called to foolishly go forth 
and love in a world that perhaps doesn't know as much about love as it once did. But the only way that that will ever change is through what we do, how we act, how we indeed pay it forward, as Lynn so eloquently said. And so, God, indeed, take that seed and plant it deep within us. Water it, nurture it, and help us grow so that we can seed other plants, so that we can share your good news, so that we can be your light in our world, your witness in our wilderness, your love amidst the darkness. And as we gather today, God, we do come here with things on our heart, prayers that are either prayers of sorrow or prayers of joy, but prayers that we now gather to share together in our prayers of the community. Reminder, if you have a prayer to share, to please unmute yourself and share your prayer for our community. I would like prayers for my son who had a very bad day yesterday and pray that he will get better instead of. I need lots of prayers. Thank you. Lord, hear our prayer. Prayers for my older sister and my sister-in-law who are undergoing some medical issues at this time. Lord, hear our prayer. I lift up prayers for vigilance and safe practice as we continue to work toward being able to return to in-person worship. Prayers for our world and the over 500,000 lost in the United States alone and the millions worldwide who will not be able to ever receive a vaccine, who will not ever be able to return to in-person worship. And I want to lift up prayers of thankfulness for the spring that is indeed springing. Um, warm weather, sunshine, um, just days that are bringing in a new season. What a blessing in our wilderness. I'd like to offer prayers for the communities in and around Minneapolis as the Chauvin trial begins, that we can find peace and understanding and commonality and keep everybody safe. Lord, well, hear our prayer. I would like to ask prayer for our young people, our young teenagers who have so many influences in their world today that they continue to make the right choices. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us now take a moment to just spend some time in silence with God as we pray those prayers which are too deep for words to reach. Let all God's people say, 
Amen. Brothers and sisters, we now come to this table to celebrate our Holy Communion. Here at First United Church, our table is an open table. It's a table for all people to join in. When Christ invited us to partake of the sacrifice of His body and His blood, He did not limit it to just those who could sit around a table. He limited it to all tables. He opened it to all people, and He allows for that meal of grace and forgiveness for all to know and love. As we come here to this table then, or your table at home, or your couch, or wherever you may be, let us say our communion prayer together. Again, print it in your bulletin insert, or words will be on your screen. O holy God, eternally greater than our wisdom and compassionate to our weakness. We praise You and give You thanks for the table before us. You emptied Yourself of power and entered our struggle, taking upon Yourself our unprotected flesh. You opened wide Your arms for us upon the cross in all worldly foolishness, becoming scandal for our sake and sanctifying us through the grave. It is then right that we would forever sing your praises and be thankful for the grace of this meal which we are about to partake. Your covenant fulfilled through Jesus Christ is a promise for the rest of our days. May we thus proclaim the glory of your name, Almighty God, Eternal Savior, Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us now join in our Lord's Prayer song together. Again, words in your hymnal packet are on the screen. As we come back to our table, we know and we hear these words of institution and remembrance that on the night that Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room, on the night, the last night they would have together, he took the bread and he broke it and he shared it with the disciples and he said, This is my body broken for you. 
Take and eat of it, and do so in remembrance of Me. Likewise, at the meal, Jesus poured out the cup of the fruit of the vine, and in sharing it with the disciples, He said, This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. Take and drink of this and do so in remembrance of Me. When we eat of this bread, when we drink of this cup, we are covenanting with that promise that Jesus lived, Jesus died, Jesus is resurrected, and Jesus will indeed come in. Come again. Let us now pray. Holy Spirit, come down upon our sacrifice. Our symbols of the sacrifice that Lord made for us so many thousands of years ago that still hold truth for us, promise, grace, forgiveness, and love. That this bread and this cup would represent the body and blood that indeed is the forgiveness of our sins, that strengthens our souls, and that realigns us with the path that You will in our life, God. Make it so through Jesus Christ our Savior, by the power of God and the, through the love of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the bread broken for you, the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat of it and do so in remembrance of Him. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you. The blood of the new covenant of Jesus Christ poured out for you. Take and drink of it and do so in remembrance of Him. The table has been prepared. Let us now commune together. Friends, let us share our prayer of thanksgiving together now. Gracious God, may your gifts of love transform us, that we would be foolish and love like you. May your presence among us provoke us to action, that we would long for the world to know your grace. And may your Spirit forever guide us, as those who are called to shine your light into the world, until that one fine day when all will be just as you will. In Jesus the Christ we pray. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen indeed. Sisters and brothers, we now come to a time of holy offering. This is a moment where our table of grace and forgiveness and love that we just received extends out into our world. It extends into our world through the gifts that you give your church to be the church, to be the beacon of light in a community that needs it. It extends out into the world through the prayers that you offer during this time for those in your life, those around you in your life, or those you have yet to meet. It extends out into our community when we share this table of sacrifice through our own sacrifice, through our own giving, through our own use of the gifts that God has given us through our hands and feet to the world. So yes, this is Holy Offer.
Indeed, let nothing keep us from singing now as we praise the God who grants us all these gifts and so much more as we sing in our doxology together. And let us now join in our prayer of dedication printed in your bulletin or words on your screen. Blessed God, receive our gifts we bring today. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit and use them for your will be done. May all that we offer and all that you are be shared with the world through Christ we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is Community of Christ, New Century Hymnal number 314. It's in your hymnal packet or words will be on the screen. This is Community of Christ. Thank you. 
And so indeed, let us go forth from this place, brothers and sisters of Christ. Let our currency be love. Let kindliness be what we share with all people. That food and faith of this table of faith would be all that people would know they need for the love of Christ in their lives. Go in the peace of God that you are all this world needs and that you are everything this world has. Go in love and peace, my brothers and sisters. Amen.